What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 craziest places wrestlers have hit their finishers. This should be an interesting one, man. It's crazy when wrestlers just find a way to hit their finisher, not in a wrestling ring or even a wrestling arena, somewhere you would never think. So this should be a good one, man. Appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel. Road to 100K. Let's get right into this bad boy. From nailing a high flying exclamation point in the Bro, middle of a damn is that gas station Darby to polarizing a rival with your wow. favorite weapon in their supposed natural habitat. This lot took their finishing moves to the extreme and then some. Gareth here from What Culture Wrestling, and here are the 10 craziest places wrestlers have hit their his, finisher. His Number 10, Hangman Page's bar station, side book shot lariat. Not for the last time on this list, one of the most uncertain and frightening periods in recent history offered up a beat of unexpected delight. Oh, yeah. With AEW chucking out a truly banana. I've actually never watched this match in entire. I've just seen clips and they were just so meme worthy and hilarious. I may actually have to take time to just go back and watch this whole crazy ass match, man. As an ultimately iconic bout that likely wouldn't have even entered the conversation had the world not been forced to stay at home throughout 2020. And it was during Double or Nothing 2020's riveting The Elite and Matt Hardy versus the Inner Circle Stadium Stampede that the folks involved opted to have the time of their damn lives while beating bro. the piss out of one another within an empty football stadium. Look no what further the than the glorious beat that saw future AEW world champion hangman adam page post legendary horseback arrival absolutely nailed jake hager with a bar and kenny omega assisted bookshot lariat wow. in the heat of battle it may not have been the undisputed highlight of the greatest contest of its genre that comes later but this signing off of the bar brawl section of the barmy action followed by a milk what and lager salute between the eventual bitter enemies was up there with the best of times in the worst of them number nine the road warriors doomsday device in a strip club oh. Oh, strip many club. Have taken to oh. their own unique spin on the combination. That sounds like a, a fun time, a fun match. <laughs> the aesthetics may just be quite uh, uh, appealing. Yo, <laughs> that is the Road Warriors' immortal doomsday device over the years. Nothing quite matches the OG iteration in terms of sickening impact. And with said finisher consisting of the team of Animal and Hawk hoisting up an unfortunate adversary on the former's shoulders before the latter takes their head off from the top rope with a flying clothesline, you have to imagine that eating the move in a squared circle would have entirely sucked. Now mm -hmm. factor in this body-breaking maneuver being executed without a ring rope or canvas in sight, and you have the entirely bizarre scenario former WWE chairman Vince McMahon found himself in when Hulk Hogan of all people requested for him to be hit with the finisher from the tag team icons during a rather pissed up trip to a strip club as you do. Whoa. Hilariously that wasn't the last tag team signature the boss would eat on the night though. With a frustrated Jim Neidhart not being happy about the Road Warriors going easy on McMahon and ultimately along with Bret Hart showing the duo how it was done in absolutely pulverizing Vince with the Hart Foundation's heart attack there and then too. Damn. Number 8 The Undertaker Where's escalator the tombstone. That? Long before they were clogging up numerous <laughs> WrestleManias with that. their era-ending <laughs> wars, The Undertaker and Triple H went at it back in 1997 on Shotgun Saturday Night, with the eventual sports what? entertainment pillars juking it out within a New York City subway station over wow. the Intercontinental Championship. Sure enough, it didn't take too long for the dead man that would soon make a living out of letting loose one of his unsettling finishers off of everything from a Hell in a Cell structure yeah. to a boneyard barn to use his surroundings to his advantage. Upon exiting the ring that was taking up residence within New York City's Penn Station, the game was soon caught in his tracks by the relentless phenom. Then, much to the delight of all in attendance, although simply distracted by the hilarious carnage en route to catching their train home, Taker managed to send the King of Kings all the way to hell via escalator as Triple H was tombstone <laughs> down the moving station stairs. Wow. Trips went home with the IC strap mine because of course he did, but his exit was aided by one of the most creative and surprisingly That's humiliating pal drivers ever to pass through the wrestling barriers. Number seven, Didn't Shane McMahon's many leaps from up high. Yep. There was actually a time when Shane McMahon was known more for his tumbling from great heights than his infamous fall from grace, you know? Uh -huh. Back in the early 2000s, Shane O'Mac seemingly made it his mission to prove that he could- Before Shane just start really kind of taking over, you know, the shows and more so focusing on him instead of the actual wrestlers, I will give Shane respect my man was willing to put his body on the line just to entertain us, bro. He is the son of a rich, <laughs> rich owner of a company. He didn't have to 
jump off of these high things and do all these crazy spots. He did because he enjoyed it. And I, I got I got respect Shane for that, bro. I will never take that away from him. Hang with the very best of them. Not by putting on thrilling technical masterclasses with the finest WWE had to offer. No, don't no. be silly. Instead, the son of the one-time boss felt that the best way to earn the respect of his peers was via hurling himself off <laughs> of increasingly insane structures Ridiculous, in order to nail bro. his trademark flailing elbow drop. Of course, SummerSlam 2000 notably oh saw the one of his stuntman fall from the heavens slash titantron after being kendo sticked by Steve Blackman. But Backlash 2001 depicted the Daredevil actually intentionally nailing big show with his leap of faith from that same position. And a few years on at Unforgiven 2003, he once again tried to send a giant to hell from up high, only to send himself there on the back yep. of Kane rolling out of harm's way. Clearly taking note from his demonic brother, The Undertaker also did something similar when faced with a soaring yep. Shane during their Hell in a Cell bout at Mania 32 too. He loves a tumble our Shane. Even though there was a crash bag right under the table, that still hurts. I don't care what nobody says. They have a crash bag there, obviously, you know, so Shane doesn't really hurt himself as much as possible to, to soften the landing. But that that just, that the room for error there is still very small, bro. Isn't he? Number six, CM Punk's GTS in the Gulf of Mexico. He may currently find himself adrift <laughs> on the back of setting fire to all things All Elite and picking a fight with the promotion's EVPs after All Out 2022. But back in 2008, CM Punk was making an entirely different splash in the thick of a famous battle with Chavo Guerrero on WWE's revived ECW brand. With the duo going at it throughout 2007-8, things ultimately escalated to the point where the ECW this. championship rivals had no choice but to take their battles outside of the hardcore arena and into the waters of Guerrero home state of Texas. As the two ECW stars threw everything at one another, including a water cooler at one point, during their Gulf of Mexico match that could only be won by what a chucking the... your opponent into said body of water, wow. the damp climax soon saw both squirming for position beside the ocean basin. And sure enough, on the back of Chavo trying his damnest to suplex the best in the world into the depths, Punk found a way to reverse out and into his tried and tested wow. go to sleep for the <laughs> floundering finale and win of crazy. Kills. Number five, Big Swole's dirty dancing in a dental practice. Returning to those experimental pandemic-induced wrestling waters now, your presenter is talking about that all-out 2020 moment that saw Britt Baker and Big Swole take a rather painful walk through the former's real-life dental practice in a wow. tooth and nail match. And while the majority of the cinematic action itself didn't exactly offer an exciting new take on the walk and brawl concept done to death during this unprecedented period, after dodging a drill to the chops and a Novocaine syringe to her arm, Swole was able to hit a pretty hilarious iteration of her dirty dancing delight. After Rebel or Reba went full soap opera with her cries of You stabbed her! Following on from Swole's needle reversal, now there's a statement, Baker's longtime ally was delivered a diploma infused spinning ripcord rolling elbow oh, in the shit. middle of the dental surgery. <laughs> not bad. content with just the one. That was not. Ex it's just. They're not even showing the footage, but that shit looked brutal. <laughs> Dang. Until Dirty Dancing, though, Swole would then unleash another on the Doctor before locking in a laughing gas mask for the surreal KO victory. This was Number a four, real Brody match. King's wow. Power Bomb at an autograph signing. Setting the tone for the absolute carnage that was set to come involving the savage pair on <laughs> AEW programming, Brody oh King God. opted to swing by Darby Allen's fan signing event back in July. And the results, well, were as brutal as you'd expect, really. Hot on the heels of the two beginning to feud within the All Elite machine a few weeks earlier, King took it upon himself to sneak attack the Face painted Daredevil at the South Center Mall in Seattle. If putting Allen in the same sleeper hold that had resulted in him tumbling out of the first ever Royal Rampage wasn't enough, however, the House of Black powerhouse soon resulted to delivering uh -oh. an attempt at his trademark Gonzo oh! bomb that wound up absolutely folding his new rival through a merchandise table. This being the nutty pal of Sting, Allen then remarkably brushed off the entire on location angle and proceeded to complete the entire four hour fan signing event. <laughs> Imagine. You getting beat up by the ops at a press, you know, press, you know, like not a press, but like a, a little conference. You getting beat up by the ops, and then you proceed to go on with the 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 conference with meeting fans and stuff and signing autographs after you just got powerbombed through a table. Imagine.
events like the massive lunatic he is shortly after. Number three, Jeff Hardy's production truck Swans on Bomb. Oh, Making this was a, career a out of very caution good and the segment, occasional man. whisper to Love the wind over the decades. Jeff Hardy's willingness to take his Swans on Bomb to new extremes and heights has seen the charismatic enigma soar from atop dizzyingly tall ladders and towering titan trons. Hell, even as recently as a few months back, uh -huh. the mid 40s stunt machine was leaping off a ledge to deliver a Swan on to the Butcher and the Blade on AEW Dynamite. Insanity, Could arguably the most outrageous location to play host to a Jeff Hardy flip from the heavens came back at WWE's One Night Stand uh, yeah. event in 2008, with the Hardy Boy appropriately delivering the extreme goods in his Falls Count Anywhere bout with Umaga, Manga, whatever you want to call him. With the two warring Umaga. around the San Diego Sports Arena, the action soon spilled outside of the building itself, and with the backdrop of a peaceful blue sky, Hardy's innovative mind ultimately threw out an all-timer of a swan this on a so, the production trucks. So dope. After booting the violent Samoan off the side of one of said vehicles, an 18 wheeler died oh, for the bro, ages was soon executed cool by the fearless face, with Hardy picking up the deserved victory in the end. Number two, Darby such Allen's cool gas station moment, coffin man. drop. Offering up another reminder of just how unquestionably insane AEW's resident crash test dummy is at the best of times, <laughs> I give you that moment when Darby Allen opted to hammer a pretty ridiculous nail in the coffin of Joe Alonso. With Sammy Guevara nudging his pal into attempting to get the better of the innovative stunt show of a performer inside of a gas station of all places, Allen quickly thought on his usually anything but grounded feet and hopped up beside the cash <laughs> register before letting loose what the rather enthusiastic cashier branded as a coffin effing drop on a fallen Joe. No. Bro, that's fucking funny, dog. <laughs> you just, man, you just there to just get your stuff and go home, and you just see a motherfucker climb on the counter and do a coffin drop to somebody on the phone. You're like, bro, I'm just trying to get five on pump six. <laughs> Can you just put five on pump six? That's all I got, man. I'm trying to go home. <laughs> Now, sure, Allen has definitely hit far more dangerous variations of his death-defying oh, yes, weapon has. over the years, crashing through actual coffins on AEW programming in particular. But for the entirely unexpected funny, sight bro. of the former TNT champion turning a humble fueling stop into his own personal playground alone, this one ranks pretty highly on the list of Allen's most inventive reverse-facing diving sentence. <laughs> Number one, Kenny Omega's stadium-sized one-winged angel. Concluding where this mad finisher location list began, with a stadium spectacle that found itself being sealed off via the mother of all one-winged angels. A match that had already seen an aforementioned bar assistant yeah, never seen this Lariat, match. Judas Effect to a Jaguar, <laughs> and a goalpost moonsault was always destined to end in truly jaw-dropping fashion. So the second Kenny Omega found himself with Sammy Guevara on top of his shoulders, while standing atop a dangerously high ledge within TIAA Bank Field, you knew something out of this world oh was about boy. to fall from the sky. Never want to shy away from taking the sort of bump that takes years off your life from merely witnessing the act itself, Jesus, the Spanish God bro. ultimately ate a stadium-sized electric chair driver from the edge of the Jacksonville wow. Jaguars' home seats all the way down to the not exactly comfortable platform below. A bone-crushing crunch was then thankfully <laughs> followed by a merciful God one, damn. two, three, as the cleaner took out the inner circle <laughs> oh, he trash and to the, the most devastating version of an already near impossible to overcome finisher ever to grace the land of all elite. And that's our list. No many other crazy that's places ridiculous. wrestlers have hit their finisher. Then let us know all about them in the comment section right down below. Low, and do not forget to like, share, and click on that subscribe button. Why oh man, bro. That was insane. I never seen that spot like him performing performing that spot in that scenario because I never watched the match. So hey, if you guys want me to uh if I can find a video with the clips of like the highlights from that match, I will definitely do a reaction on here for you guys hopefully it doesn't get blocked because i will check that match out just for you guys because once again i've never seen it before I'm, i've never i heard about it i've seen a few clips of it but i never actually watched the match in its entirety when it originally aired so if you guys want me to let me know down below and if i can find a compilation of those uh those clips i definitely will for you guys man but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel man road to 100k, appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.